Restrictions and Limitations Let's start on the personal side of the limits of MOOCs. Security of data is a topic in a lot of online contexts. In MOOCs, the data to be protected are information about the users and their behavior. This comprises address, age, gender and other information users provide when joining the course. But there is still more out there. While being in a MOOC, you are leaving a trail of clicks and keystrokes, for example when choosing and starting this video. Having these traces allows high-end data mining. In many countries, the data of traditional students are protected in a special way. Some actors in the MOOC business are handling it this way. But there is so far no legal basis to this. Or to say it in a different way, the data of real-world students are protected by the law, the data of MOOC participants are not. The reason behind this difference is legal status. MOOC participants do not have a special status to whatever institution. They are not students in the traditional sense, but people who return again and again to an educational web offer. With millions of MOOCs participants worldwide, there is a discussion about this data and relationship question going on. For knowing how you and your course participants' data are handled, please take a look at the regulations of your platform provider. There is one topic with which the relationship question becomes practically important. Certificates. If you offer to obtain a certificate, you may want to verify the identities of your participants. So the formal end of your course should be something to think about in the beginning. Copyright has always been a huge thing since the Internet is around. Let's start with the big do's and don'ts. Do use everything that suits your purpose and that you are entitled to use. Do not use anything that could violate third-party copyright or anything with an unclear origin. In traditional classrooms you can use books, movies, music and all other kind of media to get your point across. In a MOOC you should only use material that is made by yourself or for which you have legal proof that you are entitled to use it. To any question concerning copyright you should be able to answer by referring to the source of the material including your authorization to use it. The safest option is to produce the content yourself. If you and your team are not this renaissance like you should look for open educational resources like the open source in the software world Open educational resources are materials that can be used for free, at least for educational purposes. Usually, these materials come along with a Creative Commons license, providing the legal frame for your use. You should invest some time to look at the type of your specific license to find out things like if you are obliged to name the author or have the right to modify the things you use. In one version, you even get the right to use it in commercial context. If the materials you want to use cannot be produced by yourself or found under a Creative Commons license, you have to contact the publisher to obtain the permission for your use. This effort is often unsuccessful or time consuming and costly. So thinking about a substitute that can fulfill your didactic needs should always be an option. There is one way to avoid problems with copyrighted material as long as they are legally available on the web for free. Instead of providing the material itself in your course, you provide a link to the website. The members of your course can then go there, read it, see it or hear it and then come back and continue. The only thing you should make sure is that the link doesn't let your participants crash into a commercial paywall. Even more than privacy, Copyright is a topic that should probably be considered together with some expert within your institution. Probably your library should be the place where to find someone with this kind of expertise. But there's still another side to copyright. These are the texts or in a broader sense works that your course participants hand in. You should know to whom these works belong. This could even be a point when choosing a platform because some services claim exclusive rights to all coursework handed in. So you better have a look at the fine print. 
Usability describes how people interact with technical devices. Good usability means that users instantly feel comfortable and know how to handle an interface. Everything should be clear and obvious. The individual experience of a course depends on the personal background and online activities. Platforms are interested in good usability and therefore provide guidelines for the creators of their courses. For them, good usability is a marketing argument and for you as well. The possibility to download content or to work while being offline can be an important part of the usability and learning experience, allowing to work offline for a while before connecting again to the platform. Where wireless internet is not seamlessly provided, this can be an important part of the student's relationship to your course. Also as a way of providing the best possible user experience, you should keep in mind the growing number of mobile devices people use for accessing web content. Because of the smaller displays, web pages have to be optimized for enabling good interaction. The website of the platform should be able to recognize these devices and tailor the content according to their capabilities. This feature is called Responsive Design. Concerning the international availability of your course, there can be limitations. For example, MOOC platforms based in the US have to follow trade sanctions because course content is considered to be a service. So your course may not be available in all countries around the world. Including everyone who is interested in your topic needs providing subtitles and transcripts. This allows everybody with vision or hearing problems to handle your content. For all institutions with federal funding in the US, it is compulsory to enable such a widened accessibility. Last but not least, when talking about usability, you should think about the usability for the teachers who provide the material and run the course. For providing a good working environment for you or your course creators, options like collaboration of authors, an undo function and a backup service should be considered. When talking about technical issues, there are some aspects you should keep in mind, especially when running your course without a, so to say, all-inclusive platform. If you use WordPress and Google Docs, there are limitations to the amount of participants your technique can handle. Google Docs allows a maximum of 50 users working simultaneously with a document. The maximum number of viewers for a document is limited to 200. When providing videos directly from your WordPress website, you should be aware of the amount of traffic this can produce. On the one hand, this can lead to a poor performance or even collapse of your website. On the other hand, this can result in higher costs. So even if you use a private website for running the course, you should think about putting the video material elsewhere and just embed it into your content.